Hi friends, welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about tips for summer markets. I've done so many markets last year and this year, and I have a lot to do on my way until the end of the year. So I thought I can come here and tell you what was my experience or what I thought it was very helpful. And the things that I wish I would know before will be very helpful if you are planning to start or if you don't couple and you don't have so much idea about it. This video is just for you. If you are new here, I am Nazli. I am the owner and maker of Atelier Nazli Brush. I generally share my helpful small business tips, art process tutorials and weekly studio vlogs on this channel. And if you like the sound of that, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I look forward to having you join the Atelier Nazli Brush community. So before we get into today's tips about summer markets, I want to tell you how many markets I've done and for how long I have been doing this. So I started doing my first market last summer in June. I did until December and totally 27 markets I've done just last year which is actually a lot it doesn't sound quite a lot but it is too many 27 is too many for summer if you can think we have only 52 weeks in a year that means like 27 weekends it's a lot so there were days that I've done three markets in two days in a row and there were days I've done like two markets in one day which is exhausting but also last year 27 this year I've done so far 11 I've started doing my first market in April of this year total of 38 markets so far even though it's September and summer is almost over that doesn't mean this is not gonna help you or you cannot have any more markets. I will recommend you to do Christmas markets. They are very, very helpful and that brings good, good money for your business, for your small business, actually. I love doing Christmas markets because people are really open to buy something and they love coming or checking what you have, talking with you, or giving you some information like their emails, they want to share their Instagram or they can follow you through Instagram or other channels. Let's divide this video to three different parts. So the first part is going to be about where to find these markets, where are they? Or how to know which market is suiting you the best for your small business. So the second part is going to be about getting ready for the market, like what to bring with you, how to know how many products you should take with you. And the third part is going to be what to do on the market day, how to welcoming people, how to set up and organizing your stuff. So we are going to talk about all of these in this video. So let's talk about the first part, how to find these markets. So the first thing I will recommend is checking on Google. If you can type a couple words that I'm going to tell you might be helpful, like summer markets, vendors markets, makers markets, or farmers markets, and you can search art and craft fairs. That's probably the first and best way to find your markets searching on Google. So the second thing you can do is actually using Instagram or Facebook, which is the best for you. And you can basically go to find some local makers and check their Instagram accounts. So what you do when you get accepted with this market, you have to share their posts and tell where you're going to set up because this is a good way to make this advertising also let your followers to know where you are going to set up and they might come and say hi to you and every time when people share their posts they basically tell them where they are setting up and also showing you which market they are happy with and setting up again and again so you can go check those websites for these markets and apply for their applications and get accepted but it might be late or early so you might follow up the date and like save on your calendar and be sure that you applied it right on time so now we are sure how to find the markets you can either go to google you can go use your social media power or you can basically check some events going on in your town or city in this part we're going to talk about how to get ready for the market and what to bring with you to the market so opening a market is basically opening a shop you are showing your products in a place that it is up to you to decide how to represent your brand you can either make it so colorful, you can make it nude colors, you might make it more natural stuff. It depends what product you have, but you want to make it the best without getting too much because it has to be easy to set up. It has to be fine in your car. So at this point, I want to share one from my early markets and the second one is more like recent market. It is never the best. You always add things around your products or it is kind of like developing on the way. You don't need to make the best one, but you kind of want to want something that people want to come and visit you in your tent. So at this point there are a couple of things that you have to bring into every market number one is 10 by 10 tent that you should bring 
the standard size 10. 10 is the first priority for a marker. I will recommend the light color ones. So number two is a table. Table is the one that lets you to shove your products on it. It depends, you might use some different things like grid walls or some other hangers or different type of standings but it is probably the easiest one to bring with you to your first market, which I recommend six by six standard or four by four. I have six by six one. Some people are making like an L shape or U shape or adding a couple other grid walls, which I do. Since you have a table, you have to cover the table and that won't show in like what is under the table because you're gonna hide your storage boxes under the table anyway. And number three is a chair. So you wanna sit down at some point. Some markets are four hours, three hours, and there are markets like six to eight hours. It's like long, long, long markets. It is nice to bring with you a folding chairs, like portable chairs. So I definitely bring one folding chair into every market that I go, you know, especially in summertime, it's hot. You just wanna sit down and rest all the time. Standing up makes you a little tired. So these are the items that you wanna bring into every market you go. And you'll see in other makers, they all have these 10 by 10 tents, a folding table, tablecloth, and a chair. And you basically can decide how you wanna display your products. Let's say you have all the items and there are things you should still have have with you what are those it's a card reader i mean you can accept only cash but it's you know a little risky uh, if you want to make money not everybody carry cash with them it's easy for people to use just cards sometimes apple watches i that's why i use square reader which you see already in here that's pretty good it is also okay with apple watches as well or just like paying from your phone so easy i love it it's so cheap i think it's like 30 40 dollars i'm not sure so i will leave the link for that you might go and check it out also storage boxes are very very helpful to put your things protected in the box it's like rain or wind if they fell down it's like less damage for it also it's like stackable it's easy for your car i have like three large ones that i put all of my products into that so i use storage boxes and finding them very helpful and they are always under the table when i am done with my display the other thing for display you shouldn't make people tired of looking like too many similar things or too many things side by side they look so confused they can't decide i did that at the beginning i was like so many similar cards. They were like, oh, which one we will choose? It is so similar to this one. This one is so similar to that one. And they were like, I'm gonna think about it and come back later. It's good to give some options, but it is really bad to give too many options. So you have to make that balance in your own decisions. Uh, but I think putting a couple options is good, but not too many. <laughs> That's, that literally didn't help me so far. Also, do not forget about that. You are gonna go to the market with a car and you should know what car you have. You should know how much space you have and get the things for that space that can be stackable and be fit without making the car too heavy or making any like, danger for your products. So now you know how to find a market, you know how to get ready for the market, you know how what to buy for your market to set up. And at this point, we are going to talk about the part three, which is the market day. So for market day, you should probably set up before an hour or more before. Generally, they open maximum two hours before. You have to be ready like five minutes, ten minutes before the market is opening because people are not coming right on time. Let's say the market starts at nine. People are coming actually around 8.45, 8.50. So you want to be ready 10-15 minutes before the market starts and at the market day I would recommend you to bring some snacks with you because you just get ready to eat something but you cannot leave your tent so it's good to have some snacks with you to just keep your energy up so do not forget it is a day that you want to make it happen so it, it is happening it is so important for you to be energetic so important so important to be friendly without making it too much so what I'm saying with that is be ready to say hi, be ready to say how are you. So be ready to be talkative, but also let them to start. You know what I mean? So I, I'm trying to say do not like invite them to tend. It's good to be like smiling and like standing in there and t showing them that you are ready for that customer. What you shouldn't show them that you are going to try to sell something to them. So it's a different balance. It depends from person to person because some customers are like waiting for you to tell them hi. Otherwise they think that you're rude. 
but there are some customers which is like a couple other introverted or they don't like people try to sell something to them they basically do not want you to even talk to them so you have to keep the balance and after a while you do markets you kind of like try to understand the personalities so it should be something in the middle what I generally do is just like saying hi good morning I am the artist let me know if you have any questions and go to my chair and wait them to ask me something but I generally keep my energy up so people can feel like oh it's cool she's fine if we do not buy anything so that's an important thing for people to feel comfortable so it's not an easy thing standing up for hours and hours and like smiling and welcoming people and telling them the same thing again and again and again and again it's kind of like repeating yourself so you have to keep your own balance in your own way to make yourself comfortable doing these markets more and more in the future so this is basically all i can remember to share with you as tips for part one and at this point i want to talk with you the bonus test which i thought is quite helpful for my business and i bet you will like it as well so the first thing i'm going to share with you is thank you cards i think it's quite important to share with these lovely people who you really are because sometimes you might have a chance to introduce yourself or who you are sometimes you may not have that chance to talk with that person or sometimes it's too crowded to introduce yourself so it's good to have a thank you card that gives your information so these people can check your account later so what i think is like this type of thank you card works great for me but you might find your own ways i've designed this one with my own illustrations on camera it was pretty simple but i did only put one of my illustration uh, like a postcard on the front and i have only my website on the left and on the back side i basically tell be the first one to know which gives my social media so they can follow me also i say about my youtube account which i have a square code for that it says grab a cup of coffee get comfy and dive into the studio vlog and my logo in there so and also the photo shows me who i am so i think this is like very helpful and also it's like a colorful it's like people really like having these type of things in there or there's something like extra so the second business step that i thought is very important is email list so i always add one uh email list on the table right in front of the table in the middle that person is gonna pay to me after i get the payment while i'm packing their order i always tell them by the way i have an email newsletter if you want to sign up it's right in front of you i send one newsletter every month like you won't get any spam whatever you want to say because people don't really want to share their emails they don't want to use their emails for marketing but they also want to support you so i really find it helpful letting them to know i will send only one email per month because some people are like oh not really like they're not sure mm. and then I, when i say that i'll send one they're like oh okay if it's one i will i will sign up because i get too many emails from other brands it's just are making me crazy so it's good to let them know that you make only one newsletter every month because some people come to your market they love what you have but they are not on the day to buy something from you but there are days they want to support you they want to buy something from you so at this moment you want they to remember you if they don't remember you if they don't keep your thank you card or business card how they're gonna remember you so at that moment you will remind yourself to them so once a month sending one newsletter without bothering them they will know about you and they will remember you every month so here is my last tip which is kind of connected to my first part about finding the market i think it's quite helpful it really helped me so far and i called it cancellation tip so let me tell you what i do is like let's say i found the market but the applications are done they don't take any more applications but i hear about that market more and more i'm like i want to be in the market but i can't really apply do not forget in every market like I bet I can't I can't prove but I can swear that in every market you basically see people are canceling last minute cancellations are happening so I am doing markets for two years in every market I, I joined there is always one canceling minimum so for those days sometimes the waitlist cannot be heard because it's super late it's like so last minute so at that moment to these markets that I want to get in, I send an email. Let's say market is September 20th. So I send them an email letting them know like a couple days or a week before and let them know something like, hey, 
I know your applications are over, but I just wanted to let you know in any cancellation, I can come in last minute. And that really works. So what happens? They, like, I think one time I got just like an email almost like midnight, I guess like 10 p.m. for the next morning. Um, and they say like, hey, do you want to come? This is what you ask for. We have a cancellation. Do you want to come? I was like, yeah, I want to come. And when I went there, they said like, hey, we will get like a 30% or 40% sale for your fee because we told you last minute. So they also make the sales for the market fee as well. It was so helpful for me. I think that market for like, which this one happened last year, that market was my record market. So um when i that when i did that market for that place because i've been hearing this market too many times i've been seeing in every other makers i follow on social media around me i was like oh they all did this market they are always doing this in a row in every month they love it i have to try it i know uh it's gonna be good for my business so when i've done that i think i did like more like triple times more than my average market I don't share what I make in my markets in this video, but I think we will do one start to finish weekly market journey with you. And I will share with you all the fees, all the money I made from it, how many products, items I sold, uh, with all the details in other videos. If you don't want to miss it, please subscribe to my channel down below. Do not forget about it. So I think this is all for this video. I'm so happy to be able to share all of my tips with you. I hope you find it uh, helpful. I hope you can provide some information for your business from my tips. And let me know if you have any tips in the comment section. I bet some other people will find it very helpful. I want we to be able to share all of the important things for small businesses in Italian as the brush community. Please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I would like to have you in my future videos on my channel as well. And I think this is all for today. See you in the next video. Bye!